one of my favorite things I get to do with this channel is to point out shows that you might have missed. Maybe it's a hipster in me, but I love finding these hidden gems. The shows that no one talks about or expects anything from, only to find out that they are something really amazing. And while I'm not so much of a snob just to declare all modern anime trash, I feel that there are many great older anime that just don't get any attention anymore, which is a real shame. So I wanted to bring you 10 of these great older anime that you might have missed. But then I realized I haven't seen that many older anime myself, so I had to restrict this list to only 5, so yeah. I should really watch more older anime instead of just newer things. Anyway, uh, please tell me other older anime that you think I missed here, especially the more obscure ones, because yes, I know Cowboy Bebop and Evangelion, everyone says they're awesome, but I want something a bit more, less mainstreamer. Anyway, on with this list. Number 5, Little Nemo. This is one of my favorite anime kids movies, and no, I'm not talking about Finding Nemo, though that one is good too. It tells the story of a kid named Nemo who is whisked away into a world of fantasy while he sleeps. I really love the whole sense of adventure here, plus it was interesting seeing him grow through the challenges he faced in the world. Plus, the whole dream world was just, well, really cool. While its target audience is certainly the younger ones, I still had a lot of fun watching it last year, so it proves it's really something for anyone. Even if there were a couple of the things at the ending that bugged me, but I'll just pretend that they added one more thing at the end. Oh well, at least it had an ending unlike many modern anime. Number 4, Mobile Suit Gundam War in the Pocket. This one is probably a bit more well known because most anime fans have at least heard of Gundam, but what makes this thing really stand out is how it just takes a small world and tells the story as it ties into the larger war that's going on. This is one of the very few Gundam shows that I've seen, and it did feel right to experience this show without the full context, because this is also what some of the characters of the story were experiencing. I also really like this short series because of how well I was able to keep the scale small and personal instead of having it be about all grand and epic conflicts, and it's really the humanizing in these type of stories that make it make them so powerful. I did find the beginning a bit boring, but this is the one where the wait is worthwhile, and with it only being six episodes, you don't have that long to wait. Number three, Golden Boy. And now we move on to one of my favorite comedies, Golden Boy. Each episode has Kentaro traveling to some place, getting involved in a part-time job, and managing to woo the woman that he finds there. Typically through absurd and hilarious ways, including my favorite kiss scene in anime, because that was special. Kentaro is just a great character, especially for a harem story like this, because he is a very intelligent idiot. And because of this, he can do things that no other character could ever think of doing. And then the voice actor just portrayed him so wonderfully that I don't think the show would be the same without that. The show is only six episodes long too, and is perfect to watch if you just want a comedy or something fun to watch with friends. Now, number two, Perfect Blue. Perfect Blue is probably one of the movies that you've heard of and want to watch at some point, but never got around to it. So let me tell you that you really, really, really should watch it soon. It tells the story of Mima, a pop star who wants to turn actor, and she struggles with her old self behind her, and the psychological journey she goes through is just really incredible. The movie really hones in on the mind and how she goes insane and is unable to tell fiction from reality, along with an interesting picture of being a celebrity. This combined with all the twists and turns makes this an incredible movie, and it's my favorite anime movie ever. And now, number one, now and then, here and there. And for the final spot on my list, we have one of the most powerful shows I have ever seen. It tells the story of Shu, a young, never hopeful, and optimistic boy as he gets thrown into a terrible and cruel world filled with suffering. He sees countless horrors before him, and the show confuses the emotions of this all too well. Humanity really is a dark and terrible thing sometimes, and the world Shu finds himself in shows this to be true. But even then, he has hope, and I just love the contrast here between hope and despair, which... Really, that's one of my favorite things to see in any type of storytelling. So go check out this series, and there's a reason it's one of my favorite anime ever. And that concludes my list of five shows from 2000 and before that I really think you should go watch, even though not many people talk about them. Let me know what you thought about any of these down in the comments, or tell me other old shows that you think I should watch, and I will get to them probably within at least the next four years. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time.